As always, the Scarlet Faithful is brought to you by Knights of the Raritan, the Rutgers NIL Collective. Click on the link to their free newsletter in the description of this episode to find out more about Knights of the Raritan uh, exclusive event invites they have coming up for the fall. Uh, and of course, how to become a member to support Rutgers students with NIL. This episode coming to you on Wednesday, August 7th. Football is about a week and a half into camp. Uh, there isn't too much that's come out so far. Greg Shannon is going to meet with the media once again this weekend following uh, the team's first uh, scrimmage of training camp. And a lot will come out today with BTN visiting their on-campus visit they do annually. They're going to be at Rutgers today. Uh, so 8 p.m. on BTN, they're going to do a full hour-long special with Rutgers football. So that will certainly be insightful, and I'll probably do Thursday's episode based on that. Uh, and I have a lot of preview stuff coming up with football, as well as some football guests uh, in the next week or so. So I have a lot planned uh, leading up to the start of the season, but we're going to go back to basketball today. Uh, I was uh, at practice on Friday, went through a lengthy kind of review on Saturday. Jay Young was rehired or brought back on Monday. I have an episode on that. And then now, today, I wanted to talk about Bart Torvik's projections, player projections, uh, came out yesterday on Tuesday, and I wanted to go through who he projects, what he projects for Rutgers basketball. Bart Torvik's site is a great site. It is a free site, by the way, so, um, you know, this is not uh, like Ken Palm, you have to pay for a subscription. You should check it out. Uh, and But it, it, like Ken Palm, it is based on offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, uh, and he doesn't give a complete definition on how he comes up with projections, uh, but it's pretty interesting how he comes up with uh, projections for the top 10 potential contributors based on uh, his data. Obviously, it includes a lot of freshmen. Uh, so there's some things I thought we're very dead on. There's some things I think are a little bit off. This is not meant to be a criticism of Bart Torvik's projections, uh, but it's more to point out kind of interesting tidbits and things I think uh, will be different or could be similar to what's out there. And just a reminder, he does currently have Rutgers projected 18th nationally, uh, third best in the Big Ten uh, for 24-25 seasons. So that's optimistic. Let's go into player projections. Um I think we're, we'll go through points, rebounds, and assists, and then kind of summarize each player. Uh, but let's start uh, with scoring. So overall, uh, based on the projected 10 top 10 contributors, uh, he has Rutgers averaging 76.5 points per game. Possible, right? With the 11th and 12th guy, they average less than a point. Maybe it goes up a little bit from there. 76.5 points per game. I think that's about right. I mean, I think there's hope that they could average 80 points a game. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, obviously, Pykele's teams have never been close to that. Offensive talent on this team uh, is certainly uh, that the best it's ever been. So uh, certainly potential there. But I think that makes sense for these purposes of projections. Ace Bailey projected uh, in terms of leading the team in scoring at 17.1 points per game. I think that's fair. I think... We could definitely see him score more than that. I think, obviously, efficiency is going to be a big part of that. His usage rate here is uh, minutes percentage, 81%. That sounds about right. Usage rate, 24. That's high. Uh, offensive rating, 115. I think that you know that is a very efficient offensive rating. Has him at 17.1 points. I think he could average you know closer to 20, but I think 15, I think, would be way too low. Uh, 17, I feel like, is kind of the baseline of uh, where it should be. Uh, with the potential to be higher. Dylan Harper, number two, at 14.9 points per game. I think that's about right. He could fluctuate anywhere, I think, from 13 to 17. So I think it's kind of right in the middle of where he could average uh, his usage rate, 23%, or 23, excuse me, high. Offensive rating, again, 114, just with ace. And then minutes-wise, he's at uh, 76%. I think that could be a little bit higher, to be honest with you. But uh, it may makes sense. Uh, and then Jeremiah Williams, he has number three. Uh, at 10.9 points per game. That makes sense. His usage rate also high, 24. His offensive rating a lot lower, 106, 105, excuse me. Um, I think based on the talent around him, his efficiency could improve this year, uh, just in terms of being the third offensive option that teams have to focus on. I could see that number being higher. 
Uh, but I think averaging, you know, around 10 to 12 points makes sense for Jay Will and is something obviously Rutgers needs him to do and something I think that he will do. So I think all so far, these top three make a lot of sense. Number four, he's got Tyson Acuff averaging 9.2 points per game with a 21 usage rate and a 106 offensive rating. That is interesting. Obviously, the eighth leading scorer in the country last year for Eastern Michigan. He was the guy, had a super high uh, usage rate and um, in terms of having the ball in his hands, the shots per game, all that stuff. Uh, but his efficiency was low. So uh, he is another one. I think his efficiency will go up in a lesser role and having other options around him. He can't be the focal point for the defense. I think 9.2 points per game is is fair. I think you know, he's probably in that seven to 10 point per game range. I've talked about the importance of him. If he can be that fourth scoring option with j uh, where he can average, you know, eight plus a game, that's going to bring this team a lot, I think. And obviously there's question marks coming off of his uh, foot injury, uh, kind of through a uh, curveball into projecting him. Uh, but he's uh, all signs, as I said, they expect him to be uh, out of that cast this month. And I think he'll be uh, a full go when this team is back in September. And that's obviously a positive in terms of what he can bring to this team, getting acclimated and getting having a full preseason under his belt. I think Acuff is, is a huge factor in all of this. And I think where Bartorvik hasn't projected uh, makes a lot of sense in terms of scoring. Then uh, from there, a little bit of a mismatch. He has uh, Jamichael Davis fifth at 7.3 points per game. He has Zach Martini at 6.5 points per game. And he has uh, Jordan Durkak at 4.6 points per game. PJ Hayes at three. Lathan Somerville at 1.9. And then for the 10th player, he actually has Dylan Grant over Emmanuel Agbole. I think that that will flip. You'll have Agbole there uh, instead. But uh, just in terms of points per games there, I think Zach Martini, you know, 6.5 points per game. That's fair. I think he could be up to eight, you know, anywhere from six to eight. He obviously averaged more with Princeton. But I think that uh, in terms of what his role is going to be with this team, uh, he's not going to be a primary scorer. He's going to have to hit some threes. Uh, I think 6.5 could end up being a little low. Uh, but overall, uh, no no real issue with it. I think Jermichael Davis, 7.3 points per game. That is an interesting one. Obviously, uh, Jermichael Davis has uh, looked very good in uh, the offseason. A lot of hype there. I thought it looked really good when I saw him in person. In terms of minutes per game, uh, he's projecting him as a starter. And I've talked about this before, but in terms of Dylan Harper, Jeremiah Williams, and Jermichael Davis starting, personally, I don't see that. I think it's more likely Davis will be the first guard off the bench. Uh, I think for spacing purposes, for versatility, for size, uh, you know, based on this, they have Zach Martini and Ace Bailey in the front court. I think it's more likely you're going to have Agbole or Somerville at the five. Then you're going to have Martini and Ace at the three and four. So that leaves you Jeremiah and Dylan starting. Again, all of this is projected. All of this is fun. It's August. Let's just have fun with this. Uh, nothing's set in stone and obviously a full training camp ahead to determine everything and where the coaches see fit. Uh, but that was just interesting note, I thought, based on Jermichael Davis's minutes percentage, 66%. I think it's going to be less than that, whether he starts or not. Um, he's still going to play a big role. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but 7.3 points, that would be a good uptick for him. Uh, I think he could be anywhere from, you know, five to seven and a half, maybe eight points. Uh, but I think he's definitely going to be a factor. Uh, and, and in terms of his ability to pressure the ball and uh, play up tempo, he's going to be on the floor a lot. Uh, but that was interesting that he has him as the fifth leading scorer. And then Jordan Durkak, 4.6 points per game. And P.J. Hayes at three. I think P.J. Hayes is way too low. He has P.J. Hayes at 29%. Uh, minutes, uh, minutes percentage. I think that's way too low. Jordan Durkak, 36, might be around what I think it's going to be. Could be a little high. Uh, it all depends, I think, with Jamichael Davis's development. Uh, but overall, I think PJ Hayes is going to outscore Durkak just because Hayes's role. He's a gunslinger. He's a three guy. He, he, they need him to shoot threes. They're going to feed him for threes. Durkak is more of a, I, I think, a distributor, uh, kind of a Swiss Army knife someone that's going to uh, do a lot of little things. He plays extremely hard. He can get to the rim. He can get to the free throw line. I do think he's going to be a positive factor this season, um, but I don't think he's going to average five points a game or 
if that more than P.J. Hayes. I think Hayes is going to be uh, vital to the offense, and Dirkak is going to be more of a do-it-all kind of guy. So I would flip-flop that uh, for sure. And then just in terms of Somerville, you know, modest projections there, 1.9 points per game. I do think he's going to develop and be more of a factor as the year goes on. I'm not saying he's going to average eight points a game, but I think he could average four, five points. Who knows? Uh, if he becomes a clear-cut starter, he could certainly average more than that. So I think he's underplayed. I think the value of Hayes and Somerville is being underplayed here. I think Dirk Hack's a little high. Uh, overall, everybody else makes it pretty much sense. Uh, so, yeah, I think Rutgers could average 75 to 80 points per game. Uh, and they have him at 76.5 for the top 10. So about right. A little bit of, you know, tweaking on a couple players there, but overall pretty good. Rebounds per game. Interesting note here. He has total 30 rebounds per game based on the player averages. Again, it's the top 10. You could have a sprinkle there for a couple guys on the bench. Obviously, I'm talking about Ebola here, uh, as well as um, Bryce Dorch. He has Grant instead of Ebola. I think Ebola will get some rebounds for Rutgers. Uh, so he's not even counted. He has Dylan Grant averaging zero rebounds per game. So that's a discrepancy there. I would change that. He's got Somerville averaging one rebound per game. I would change that. I think both of them, you know, modestly could average three rebounds a game. So that's five. Also going back to 30 rebounds a game. Rutgers has averaged anywhere from 35 to 38 rebounds per game uh, in the last five seasons. Obviously, we hope they shoot better. So it might take away some offensive rebounding opportunities. But at the same time, uh, if this team's only averaging 30 rebounds a game, that's I think it's going to be a problem. I think they'll be closer to 35, maybe more. Uh, so I think right there that addresses, you know, one rebound with Somerville and Grant. I think you'll get closer to five and six, five or six per game between Somerville and Agbole, a mismatch, mishmash there. He's got PJ Hayes at 1.6, Dirkak at 2.6, Acuff at 2.3, uh, Joe Michael Davis at 3.5. He did average over three last year, so that's fair. Zach Martini, 3.9. I think he could be a little bit higher than that, closer to five. I can see Zach Martini averaging anywhere like seven points, five rebounds per game, and having uh, the importance not even show up all in those statistics. Jeremiah Williams, 3.7 rebounds. That's realistic. Dylan Harper, five rebounds per game. That is realistic, too. That might be a little high, uh, but I like that they have that for him. And then Ace Bailey, 7.2 rebounds per game. Would love to see him closer to nine, ten. Uh, but I think seven is fair baseline for, listen, a 17, seven, you'll take that for sure. I think he could be more dynamic than that. Uh, you know, can he average a steal? Can he average a block? Not projected here by Torvik. I think he can, uh, assist. They have him at 1.5. I think he'd be a little bit higher than that because I think he's a really good passer. But again, these are kind of, I think for, I think the exciting thing is that he has Rutgers projected 18th and Ace Bailey's numbers are pretty standard in terms of what they have projected. They're not projecting him to be a superstar. They're projecting him to be good, uh, but I think he could be a lot better than good. Dylan Harper, 14.9 uh, points. Let's kind of turn it around. We'll go into total players here. 14.9 points, five rebounds, 1.7 assists. That's my biggest gripe with all these projections. Dylan Harper, only 1.7 assists. For Rutgers as a team, he has 12 assists projected. Rutgers averaged 12 last year, but every year, Prior to that, when they had a good team, they were closer to 15, 16 assists per game with a pretty high assist rate nationally. Last year, they were not. Uh, and makes sense. But if they only average 12 assists per game, they're not going to be as good of a team as we hope they would be. Not to me, based on the player projections, Dylan Harper is going to average uh, more than 1.7 per game. He led uh, Team USA at the FIBA U19 Cup in assists, close to four a game. He averaged close to four a game in the EYBL one of the assist leaders there. He's going to be, uh, uh, you know, the the maestro for this team. I think he could average up to five assists a game. That might be a little high, but I think four is very realistic. Uh, so I think 1.7 is way low. And again, these numbers for Dylan Harper, they're kind of baseline. So again, he has Rutgers projected 18th nationally and their best two players. I feel their stat projections are pretty modest. So that's a positive. Their offensive rating uh, is obviously very high. Uh, and then in terms of Jeremiah Williams, 2.7 assists. I think that's fair. He could average, you know, two and a half, three assists a game. Any more would be great. Uh, but 3.7 rebounds makes sense. Zach Martini, one assist to Michael Davis, two assists. I think Davis, you know, Davis's stat line is very interesting here. 7.3 points, 3.5 rebounds, two assists. Uh, obviously not counting steals. 
Uh, he's going to be a productive player. I think he's going to do a lot of different things for this team. Uh, again, I do think he's going to be probably off the bench uh, in terms of how the rotation goes. Uh, but I think in terms of his stat line, uh, he's a good rebounder for his size. I think he'll get some more assists this year. Again, the ace factor with Dylan and, and Jermichael Davis for me uh, and, and Jeremiah Williams pumps up that assist rate. So I think if, if ace is efficient and gets to the rim uh, – at will, which I think he can for the most part, uh, assist rates are going to go up. So uh, that's that's something to note. But I think Zach Martini's line, 6.5, 3.9 rebounds, one assist. He averaged one assist at Princeton last year. Pretty fair. That's, you know, six and a half to four. I think he could be more of a seven to five uh, guy, uh, maybe a little bit more, but overall pretty fair for him. Tyson Acuff, 2.3 rebounds, 1.3 assists. Tyson Acuff, you know, he's going to have to uh, – have fit within the flow of the offense. And that is the biggest key in terms of an adjustment for him and his role. Uh, but I think overall those projections make sense. Dirk Hack, I, I do think is going to be a Swiss Army knife. Uh, 4.6 points, 2.6 rebounds, 1.1 assists. I think he could average more assists there as well. Uh, rebounds sounds about right. He's a gritty guy. He's going to be a good rebounding guard. Uh, and we'll see. P.J. Hayes, you know, he's not going to be a huge rebounder. He's got him at 1.6 and then assist 0.5. I think he could average about assist a game. He's He was looking for guys uh, in the half court in terms of what I was seeing at practice. So I think he's going to, you know, play a good role there. So overall, I think pretty fair projections by Bart Torvik. My biggest issues are Dylan Harper's assists at 1.7 is too low. Uh, P.J. Hayes scoring three points per game is too low. Somerville and Agbole not really getting counted as rebounders at all. Way too low. Overall, fair projections, modest projections, I think. Uh, and again, the positivity of these projections is they're not crazy. And he's got Rutgers 18. So the reality is, and again, this is all an exercise. I know there's going to be people listening to say, calm down, calm down. This doesn't mean anything. You know, I got comments from my practice report on, on the message boards that it was all BS, right? Because they don't read it. Not, not me specifically, but they don't read into preseason projections. It's all BS. Well, Respectfully, I trust what I saw with my own eyes and uh, what what I think is possible with this team. But these numbers, yeah, it's an exercise. Nothing's guaranteed. Uh, there is a uh, analytical basis for these numbers. And I'm just pointing out where I think they kind of differ uh, in terms of the eye test or what I think can actually happen on the court this year. But bottom line is, Rutgers is projected 18th. Uh, in terms of efficiency, just wanted to mention that before I go. Uh, he has Rutgers right now 52nd with offensive efficiency at 112 and defense six nationally at 93.2. I think Rutgers could be better than 52nd offensive efficiency. If, if this team, if they could be a top 35 offense and still be a top 15, 20 defense, uh, they're going to be really good. And he projects them really good defensively. Elite projects them as a good offensive team. Not great. We'll see. It's obviously going to take time. Things have to mesh, but a lot of exciting things to think about with these projections. Check it out, Torvik, uh, barttorvik.com, great site, and uh, exciting. So thanks so much. I'll have plenty of football coverage coming the rest of this week and next week. We'll, we'll lace in basketball there and some other things. I also have an interview out with Emily Mason from Rutgers Women's Soccer that came out on Tuesday, so check that out. And thanks so much for listening and watching once again here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. 